question of all the people that say, no, I'm not going to put it. Well, we've gotten to the point now where we actually have uh, masks for us and the kids in both of our cars. And then we had a few extras at home, too, because I've left the house and forgot. And yeah, I'm like, it's oh, easy no. to do. Yeah, it's definitely easy to do. We keep a whole box of them in one of our vehicles. The, the car we drive the most, we just have, we keep a bunch in there just in case. But even then, there's been times when even when we have the masks in the car, we still get out of the car and start walking towards the store. And we're like, oh, wait, got to go back. Because it's still just habit. You've lived your whole life without having to wear a mask. It's it's a hard habit to break. What my wife did, you know, there's laundry day. So there's the underwear day. And then there's the, you know, the, the regular shirts that you can mix all the colors together. We now have a mask day at the Rieger family. <laughs> so, all right, throw all the masks in there. And they were drying on a rack the other day. So they can just yes, go and take You're supposed to wash I them, found apparently. the hard way that they shrink quite easily. Anyway, the ones that we made, we made really cute masks. And I threw them in the washing machine, threw them in the dryer, pulled them out. And they were like, the child's size. <laughs> Those don't even work, guys. You need an N95. Sit down over there. By the way, do you guys like my mask? Oh, yeah, I saw it. It's very cute. Yeah. I, I like it's to say it's cute. out of this world. It really you know, is. But it's, it but really I'm is. Seriously, the people say they don't work. Okay, obviously there's better masks than other masks. But if you have just the generic cloth over your face and you decide and you sneeze, it's going to limit where that goes. Period. Sure. End of story. It may yeah. a, one mask may work better than the other, but it's going to limit it. And if you don't want to wear it. Just be cognizant of the fact that somebody's going to videotape you not wearing it. That, that's what I do. I do. I just follow the rules for the videotapes. That's what I do. So I don't get in trouble. Uh, all right, you guys. Nick Cannon. He was fired from uh, Viacom CBS. Did I say that? Viacom? Yeah. I was supposed to say Viacom. I think it's Viacom. It is Viacom. Uh, Viacom CBS yesterday after making these anti-Semitic comments on his YouTube show. And now he's actually demanding an apology, and he wants ownership of Wild Now. So he shared this really long statement on his Facebook account yesterday. He said that he was deeply saddened that the network refused to use this opportunity to grow closer together and learn more about one another. He demanded ownership of the show Wild Now. He talked about how he created this billion-dollar brand, and he said that... Basically, his ownership of the series was swindled away, and he ended this statement by demanding an apology from the company. It's kind of weird, right? So, so he's the one that made the statements, yes. and now he's demanding an apology from the company that is parting ways with him. Now, yes. you read the statements, and they, they weren't great by any no. means. I guess I also kind of see his point about establishing Wild and Out, so maybe he would want, obviously... Yeah, he would want to take it with him, but I don't think it works that way. No, and, and he has since issued his own apology, which he didn't do right off the bat. He kind of wasn't apologizing at all for the comments he made, but he did since apologize for his hurtful and divisive words um, towards the Jewish community. So he has issued an apology there as well. Yeah, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, Dwayne Wade last night, he, he uh, sent a tweet initially saying, we are with you followed by a black fist and said, keep leading. And then Wade uh, deleted that tweet and says, I was too quick to respond without being fully informed about his hurtful anti-Semitic remarks. As you all know, I have zero tolerance for any hate speech. There's been a few guys that have kind of initially rallied to Cannon and then didn't get the full grasp of everything. And then, whoa, they're back walking back I fast. Yeah. 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 yeah, there was probably some backlash to Wade about that one, for sure. So, new body cam footage from George Floyd's deadly arrest was made public yesterday, you guys. It basically documented the critical moments leading up to his death as he just pleaded with officers to let him go. So, the footage basically just shows everything. It shows the struggle between Floyd and the police leading up to this officer putting his knee on Floyd's neck for about nine and a half minutes, which is obviously much longer than previously estimated. And you can see that Floyd is just visibly distressed. He is pleading for his life. He is sobbing. He is asking the officers, you know, obviously that, you know, telling him, I'm not a bad guy. I, I'm not in this to win this. Please, please help. stop doing this. I can't breathe. He said I can't breathe 25 times at least. Um, it's just a really a, a desperate scene that was released. And um, as this footage was made public, it also comes with the news that his family has filed a lawsuit against the city of Minneapolis and four officers that were charged in his death. So the lawsuit basically alleges that these officers violated Floyd's rights and they restrained him and that the city allowed a culture of excessive force and excessive racism to flourish in its police force. I mean, and, and that's no surprise whatsoever that a civil suit's come in. It's almost... Right. Uh, it's, I don't know if this is insensitive. It's like a backlog line, basically. These guys are kind of 
from four officers for the entire department. Uh, but yeah, that the, that body cam, some of the stuff out of that is just it's, it's absolutely sickening. It is. It's, it blows your mind. I, I mean, you saw what was happening. One of the officers at one point tried to. No, keep going, keep going. I just I, I thought, had a thought. I made a gesture. Okay.
less than a few clicks away. We offer convenient options for you to get your parts quickly. Order online and pick up for free at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store. We'll even bring it on curbside. Or you can have your parts delivered right to your door. Free shipping on most orders over $35. Visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Schedule this. What do I have to do? And they're like, Oh, you can come in tomorrow. I'm like, Oh, okay, okay. 
Okay. So oh, they're really taking really, that serious. It didn't postpone my appointment yeah. too too long, um, which is the good news. I was still. I was. Uh, this is the first time I've been turned away, and I also could then kind of got nervous. Like, oh my gosh, do I have COVID? But you're good. I don't think I do. I mean, I. The yeah. fever is good. You know, two things about this. First of all, there must have been something that I miss a lot. I guess. Like, 99.1 doesn't seem like a temperature, because isn't 98.7, like, norm? But now yes. they say, like, temperature should be in the 97s. Like, I recently bought one of those really expensive thermometers, thinking, like, we yes. should have one for a kid and with COVID going on. And it was always in the 97s, so I returned it. But then I was told, no, oh, that's the new thing. Like, a normal temperature <laughs> is, like, 97.1, if I do say right. so myself. So... I thought the deal was that if it was 100.6 or higher, that's what's considered dangerous. And so anything, and, and then what about this place? Like, do they have more than one testing, you know, to test your temperature? Like, maybe maybe their thermometers uh, the, is false, you know? Maybe I don't they, think it was. I mean, she took her temperature right there in front of me, and hers was normal. So, I mean, I... I don't know. I mean, I guess it was, I, I was running a temperature. I had a fever, a very slight one, but... That's not a fever. Um, I'm sorry. Well, I, I, would I like asked that, her I that question. Doctor like, is that a fever? Is that a fever? You know, because I was, I was kind of shocked. Because I feel great, but I understand. Like I told him, like, I don't want to go in here, obviously, if I'm sick. And you have these rules in place, which I understand. But it is, a, I was just a little frustrated. And I did think about people filming me because I'm like, okay, I, I keep it pretty cool. Like, I'm pretty calm, cool, collected all of the time. But there's little things that can just, you know, get under my skin and frustrate me. I, I could feel myself getting frustrated. I'm like, is there anyone filming me? Okay, just go home. Just go home. Think about things. Relax. And uh, it's all good now. And then check the I'm internet. Back today, so. Just to make sure. Yeah. Like, like, did you think about, like, some, spewing some obscenities? Somebody oh, definitely no. would have picked it. Like, I, I just, honestly, uh, first of all, again, I'm no doctor. I'm no epidemiologist. 99.1 seems rather normal to me. We'll take your calls at 248-539-9797. But can I ask you guys a personal question? Like, I'm totally for people acting reasonable and behaving themselves and wearing masks and like doing their part to get through this thing and not throwing backyard poker games with more than six people <laughs> like, like i'm totally for all that but is there any part of you if you saw somebody that's maybe having a bad day like heather yeah. that gets told to wear a mask or told that they can't go somewhere because of the temperature and they start to freak out a little bit would you yank out your phone and start filming like like i am again i can't stress it enough I, you should act good well you should behave but it's also so weird that the first thing people do is yank out their phone and film somebody who maybe is having the worst day of their life i mean honestly like that i've I never quite never understood that. that i feel bad almost well i mean you should be at yourself then right I, i'm not that sure person. i'm not that person that's going to start recording no way but i mean it thing is, the recordings have caught things as well as needed to be caught. That you're so, absolutely you know, right. I, I agree with you. You know, but I don't know. I, I, I'm just, I'm curious more than anything. Has anybody had something happen to them like Heather has where there's been, you've had a COVID scare or you've had something, you know, where you accident, you forgot to wear your mask or something like that and you got confronted, you got rejected. You know, I mean, in the end, I mean, these people are they're following the, the rules. Yes, they're you know? doing their job. Well, the first, when COVID first struck, if you will, and our radio station pretty much went remote, right? I mean, with the exception of me on a Saturday or Caputo or, or Tom, there, there, there's, there's, there's not a whole lot of people that are allowed in the building anymore. Most people are working from home. But early on, early on, I woke up on a Saturday morning. I was supposed to work at like 2 o'clock. Maybe it was 6 o'clock. I can't remember. And I was freaking out about COVID, so I took my temperature. And I had a slightly elevated temperature, but I'm talking like 99 point whatever, right? It was 99 point nine, almost 100. So I took it again. Same deal. I took it again. And I actually texted Tom. He makes the schedules around here. And our boss, Jimmy. And I'm like, guys, I might be freaking out here, but I kind of got a temperature. They immediately told me to stay home. Of course, three hours later, I take a temperature. I was totally fine. So I broke, I freaked out early. Since then, 
I've been pretty good about it. Right, and then we've had some other minor scares like that where we thought, oh, well, and every single time we told the person to stay home, we've had a couple producers who've had family in the hospital, and we basically really? told them, yeah, and we've not not with COVID, but with other related other things, and and we've said, okay, uh, you stay home for two weeks, and then you can come back if you're okay. Two four eight five three nine nine seven nine seven. The ticket text two four eight five three nine nine seven nine seven. You heard Heather's story. She handled herself beautifully, we think, until yeah, the tape it, comes it out. Was all right. Until it the was footage right. comes out. Maybe it'll, it'll probably take about a couple of days to get back to you, let's be honest. Uh, have you had a scare like Heather? Have you gone someplace? Have you had a little elevated temperature? Have you been denied entry to a place that you really need to go to because they thought maybe you had COVID? If you want to hit on it, 248-539-9797, on the ticket. 97.1, the ticket. Traffic. From the WWJ AM 950 Traffic Center, quite a few issues on your drive this morning. That includes several accidents along 696 hitting eastbound. There's one at M10 on the right shoulder. Another on 696 eastbound at Greenfield is blocking the two left lanes. 696 westbound near DeQuinder, a wreck is reported with backups from before Ryan Road. Also heading out towards 75 southbound after Jocelyn, another accident reported. And a wreck blocking the left lane, 94 westbound just after West Grand Boulevard. I'm Michelle Penny of Traffic. This is Tiki Barber with a Radio.com Sports Minute. The NBA has a quote hotline set up for players to report suspicious activities about their fellow players breaking COVID protocols. At first blush, this seems silly. Players aren't going to dive each other out. But a week into their bubble down in Orlando, there's been a handful of anonymous tips. This tells me one thing. Players are actually scared about this virus, and the recklessness that some young players might exhibit is unacceptable. Once the games start, I'm sure that most guys will be locked in as they play games that will determine their seating and, for some, set them up for a potential championship. But that's still over two weeks away. They're away from home, away from family, and sometimes young athletes will be knuckleheads. So even though, to use a Godfather reference, these guys are acting like Fredo, it's the best thing for everyone. I'm Tiki Barber. Hi, this is Jay Farner, CEO of Rocket Mortgage. Making the right financial decisions has never been more important. We can help guide you to those right decisions now when they matter most. Mortgage rates are near historic lows. So when you call 8338-ROCKET or visit us at rocketmortgage.com to start your refinance, you'll be well on your way to saving money every month. The rate today on our 30-year fixed rate mortgage is 3.375%, APR 3.59%. Right now could be a great time for you to take some positive financial steps forward with a cash-out refinance from Rocket Mortgage, which could give you the boost that you're looking for. In addition, we may be able to help you refinance with little or no out-of-pocket costs. At Rocket Mortgage, we're committed to every client, every time, no exceptions, no excuses, giving you the best mortgage experience. Call us today at 8338-ROCKET or go to rocketmortgage.com to learn more. Rates subject to change. 1.875% fee to receive this discount rate. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing under license in all 50 states. And MLS number 3030. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers want to get you back on the road again. We're open and ready to put you in the driver's seat of a brand new Chevy. So hurry in and check out our award-winning lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs. Then put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Highways and the freeways try to melt you. Baby, I got your back. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers have got your back and are ready to put you in the driver's seat with a Chevy Blazer. Blazer is the midsize SUV you've been looking for. Its bold design and athletic stance will turn heads wherever you go. Its roomy interior offers seating for up to five passengers. Plus, the available cargo management system keeps everything in its place. Chevy Blazer, it's one tough beauty. Hurry into your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers and lease a 2020 Blazer 2LT front-wheel drive for just $229 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Visit ChevyDetroit.com. Lease is for a 2020 Blazer 2LT front-wheel drive for 24 months, 10,000 miles per year. For well-qualified customers with a GM lease in the household, 1519 through lease signing after all offers plus title tax and dog fees. No security deposit. Program subject to change without notice and certain restrictions may apply. See participating dealer for details. Offer ends July 31st, 2020.
Welcome back to the dog show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the shelter pet group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, tail wagging, backyard hanging, and of course, companionship. And what breed would you say Satchmo is? I'd have to go with maybe a lavish terrier hound chihuahua looking kind of mix. Tremendous dog. Mm, I'd also like to point out Satchmo's coloring a white, gray, brown, black brindle. Simply marvelous. You know, it's such a treat to watch a dog like this. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive. And now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance so common with this group. And finally, the loving face lick. It's great how he just gets in there and well licks. Fantastic. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Art Council. Coming up this morning on WWJ News Radio 950, it's your virtual chance to get a job, even in a COVID pandemic. That story and more when you tune in to AM 950 or favorite WWJ on radio.com. When big things happen in Detroit sports, you hear it first on Detroit's number one sports station, 971. The ticket. Breaking news powered by radio.com sports and brought to you by Pennzoil. Motor oils from natural gas. The proof is in the Pennzoil. Text the ticket using the same number you used to call the ticket. Ticket text 248 539 9797. All righty, 971 the ticket, 650 in the Motor City, the Jamie and Stoney show with no Jamie and no Stoney, 702. We have the governor, Gretchen Whitmer, who will join us and we'll get the latest on COVID in the state of Michigan. And by the way, good feats by the governor, getting Michigan and Michigan State Athletics to agree on something, to come together on something. Nice job, Gov. Not this Gov, but that Gov. No, that's but great. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get into that, but let's go to Mike and Taylor. You're on the ticket. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hi, this is from uh, Heather. What they did at my work is they... I get my temperature taken two or three times a day, depending on where I pick up at. All the time at work, they gave us a digital thermometer to carry with us because we've noticed that guns can sometimes give you out erroneous readings. And if that's off on your forehead, they usually take it off your wrist. Well, I, I'm going to bring my thermometer with me today to this appointment. So in case mine is high on my forehead, I will... Uh, try my own. You do realize I don't think that's going to work. Like, yes, your official <laughs> thermometer says I'm at 99.5, but guys, mine says 97.1. Great radio station, exactly. too. So I, I don't think that's going to work. It might not well, work, but... The temperature it... this morning was only 95.6. Okay, so, Mike, is that normal? Or is that... That's yeah. way low, right? No, that's, that's normal for me. I'm usually in uh, 95 or low 96. When did... Wow. See... If I took 95.6, I feel three years ago, five years ago, you'd be, you'd have hypothermia. You'd have to rush to the doctor. Like, that seems super low. No, they said that's the new normal. It's supposed to be down in the 96, I guess. The new normal. I don't know how that works. How can you just change the normal for the temperatures? That seems it's like, like it's... they changed your blood pressure. Before it was 140 over 80 was considered high. Now 130 over 80 is considered high. Oh, okay. It's a good point, but thank you, Mike. See, I'm old school when it comes to this stuff. It's it's just ninety eight six. It's the way it, it that's that's what it's been forever. And all of a sudden we have this thing in our in this generation where everything needs to be adjusted. You know? It's like I just think there's certain we got a things. text we got a text from a doctor. Ninety nine point one is not elevated. And then another one says the official protocol says one hundred point four is a fever. You're you're fine. Oh, all right. So I, sh I, I would have been all right. I would have been okay. We had another, another ticket text. Uh, had a scare a couple weeks ago. I went out of town to Indiana for one day for a job with, and I stayed in a hotel. That day I got home and I had diarrhea, and I thought, uh oh, I've got COVID. Turns out to be bad fast food. See, other things still happen that used to happen. Everything isn't That's COVID. true. That's not true. That's Everything else was true. cancer's gone. Yeah, cancer's gone. A a everything's gone. Those AIDS are gone. Yes. Everything's go just COVID is all we have. Now, Heather, just when you yeah. go back today, 
Mm -hmm. I would say don't bring your own temperature or thermometer. Why? Then no, no. That, I have that, to. That could lead to some form of um, fracas, if you will. I, I, well, I don't think it's a good idea. I'm doing it because I need to have proof if they send me away again to make me feel better about myself. All right, we got another ticket text that says, at my, at my business, anyone with a temperature reading of 99.8 or higher is denied entry. Now, even though the protocol is 100.4, hey, if that business wants to do that, I think you're, I think that's fine. I guess. I it agree. Just, it, it just seems all so cryptic. Like, like, what's fine? Like, what is it here? What's it? What's it at the ticket? You have to go through security screenings, right? right. What does it have to be under? Ninety-eight something? Like, I don't know. Well, that we we're not doing temperature screenings. Oh. So, but they ask us a series of questions. Gotcha. You know, the whole, right. tra have you traveled? Have you had been around somebody that's had it and all that stuff? It's the same questions everybody gets. Um, we got another one that says, uh, elevated temps when pregnant or mid-cycle for women is normal. Cat, cat scratch fever, if you will. Okay. That's from Stoney in uh, Traverse City. Right. Well, Hanging out. not pregnant, so uh, that's good. By the way, we can give you a quick Stoney update. And then we're going to get to get to Ed O, Coach Ed Orgeron, who said something yesterday that some people are a little upset about. We'll get to the governor, Governor Whitmer, at 702. But just so you know, Stoney's on vacation. And he got shamed by Gov and Greg, a little bit by Heather, too, I'm sure. He took a picture with a, a former colleague, I guess, a couple days ago, and they weren't wearing masks, and they weren't social distancing. And after he called out... Jennifer Hammond, Dick Greg Campy, and Ken Daniels, and Bob Wanowski from this very radio station saying, where's your masks? Stoney got called out by Greg, and the Jamie and Stoney Twitter page by Gov was behind that. So just so you know, Stoney has been shamed into now wearing masks because his latest picture up on Twitter and Facebook, he now is in full mask. So congratulations, guys. Just shame Stoney in the wearing one. Now you know his mask in that picture, and he's been wearing this mask primarily. Is uh, do you know what's on it? I did not look close. Pretty. Yes. Oh, the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, uh, that Eagles. Uh, Flyers. Flyers. Flyers mascot. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. He always has to have something that has to go back to Philadelphia. Even though he'll tell you he's all Detroit all the time. So there's your Stony update for the day. If you're wondering of what Stony's doing on vacation, at this time tomorrow, we'll tell you, unless we forget. All right, I, I wanted to bring this up because it's interesting. Lincoln Riley, the head coach of Oklahoma, said the other day he believes there's going to be college football. He cannot see them not playing college football. Brian Kelly got on Get Up yesterday, the head coach of Notre Dame, and he kind of echoed those sentiments and said he could definitely see it being played in the spring, too. Then Ed Orgeron, of course, the national championship coach from LSU, said the following. Vice President Mike Pence was in Baton Rouge yesterday, or this was actually Tuesday, and Eddie O says the country needs football. We need to play. This state needs it. This country needs it. He goes on to say, this can be handled, talking about the coronavirus. Now, that last part, of course, has gotten him into a little bit of hot water. People are like, dude, why is a football coach commenting on if the coronavirus can be handled or not? Yeah, let's go Cats. Let's go Cats. And I think a lot of people are upset because they don't think college football is going to happen anyway. I got two things here. Number one, with the three comments by the three men that I just mentioned, do you believe that college football is still alive at least just a little bit? Because the overwhelming feeling is it's not going to be played. And then the second part is, do you have any issue at all with a head coach of a football program saying, we need to play, this state needs it, this country needs it, this, talking about the coronavirus, can be handled? I think people are extremely overreacting to what he said. You know, to me, he's telling the truth 100%. He says need. He didn't say must play I no matter with him. must play no matter what. We need these things. Look, hell yeah, we do. Society needs to get some things back to normal. We need it. But if things are spiraling out of control, then we got to reconsider again. You know, I, I, go, going to the high school level. I know the MHSSA is going to decide soon on w what's going to happen with w these kids. Need to play. I was just texting with a friend last night. They're going to be devastated if they don't play. Absolutely devastated. 
I look at the whole like local school thing as a in sports and all that is and and, and just going to school in general that the, the kids kind of saw this as a novelty a little bit that it was a, kind of a cute little thing and oh we're gonna get a long summer and, and they kind of accepted it I think you're looking at long-term damaging effects if you don't start pushing through with some of these things I don't disagree uh, with anything you said really and i agree with you about orgeron now mike pence was there and he was clapping and being you know he was happy with what orgeron was saying but when he says we need to play the state needs it this country needs it of course louisiana is having like every state COVID issues we do need it we do like 